I'm going to compare two gaming headsets from Razer, the Razer Black Shark V2 and the Razer Black Shark V2X. I'll start with an overview and go over the main differences of each device. Then I'm going to compare each device in terms of headphone audio quality, microphone audio quality, comfort and build quality, convenience, and then give my verdict on which of these two is the better purchase. Both the Black Shark V2 and V2X are gaming headsets. They function as headphones for listening, but they also have a microphone for speaking into. I bought my Razer Black Shark V2 for $100 and my V2X for $50. To see their current pricing, I have Amazon links to both of these devices in the description. So in short, here's what separates the V2 from the V2X. First, the V2 has a detachable mic. The V2X mic cannot be removed. Both devices have a non-removable audio cable with a 3.5 millimeter jack plug at the end of them. You can plug the end into a PS4 controller and your mic and the headphones will be detected instantly. However, the V2 also comes with a USB sound card. So you can plug this jack plug into here and then you can connect this by USB into your console or into your PC. Now this sound card is compatible with Razer Synapse and using it with the headset, you get a lot of control over the audio coming from the headphones themselves and control over the microphone. To plug into a PC, the V2X comes with this splitter so that you would plug the 3.5 jack plug into one end. And then on the other, it has right here, this one side goes into the mic input for your computer. And then the other is the line out. So just as you would normally use for your headphones, just for listening. The V2 and V2X have slightly different materials on the ear cups and the headband, but I'll get more into that in a little bit. And that's it. Since the main difference between these headphones is the USB sound card that comes with the Razer Black Shark V2, let's start with headphone audio quality. Now I spent way too much time going back and forth between both of these headsets for gaming, listening to music, and even listening to vocals for some of my future videos. But I wanted to be really thorough with my testing, so here are my results using these headsets. When using the 3.5 millimeter headphone output, the audio on both of these two headsets is pretty bad. Now I know they have some good marketing for their new super slick drivers, but the audio overall on both of these headsets is pretty tinny. Highs get harsh easily on these headphones, they're not super clear. The mids, there's not too much detail, but you know, it's all right. And there's just no bass at all on either of these headsets. So if you want to buy these for listening to music on your phone or for an immersive game experience, or maybe even just watching movies, then these really aren't it if you're gonna be using the 3.5 millimeter jack plug. And I did quite a bit of testing with these, but I couldn't really hear a difference when I was using the 3.5 millimeter jack plug. However, the V2 with the USB sound card gets a massive boost when you use it on PC with Razer Synapse. Razer Synapse is a free program from Razer. When you plug the device in, it will let you update Synapse and this gives you access to an equalizer, lots of mic options and THX surround sound. I was able to get sound that I really liked out of the V2 with the equalizer. Bass boost effect is really nice too. I could Feel the helicopters over me in Resident Evil. The rumble from elevators, the explosions, they actually had some vibration to them, actual bass. Uh, in Mass Effect, there's like this enemy, it's called a Thresher Ball that like barrels under the ground. And you can't, I mean, you can hear it in the V2X, you can hear it, but you can't feel it at all like you can in the V2s when you put the equalizer and the bass boost on. You don't even have to crank the bass boost all the way up, just enough to, you know, feel it. But the V2X with just the cable that comes in the box, uh, the lows are just way too empty. You're listening to music, especially like rap or like EDM or anything. You just don't hear any bass at all. And in games, you really don't hear it. Now the drivers themselves on the V2 are still not actually that good. They distort really easily if you put the bass even more than a couple notches up. So be careful when you're experimenting with that. In addition, the EQ is also very useful for finding and boosting the frequency of footsteps for whatever game you're playing to give you an advantage tactically. Now I bought a bunch of gaming headsets to test. Those are just a few back there. And overall, honestly, I was pretty disappointed by the fact that they cost so much and that people are buying these for so much money and the sound quality is just really not that great. But I can see how these companies are getting away with it. Not only is it, you know, good marketing, of course, but you can kind of make tinny headphones 
when you are catering to people that play FPS games like Call of Duty, Warzone, PUBG, or any of these other FPS games. Because first of all, gamers will pretty much buy anything that says gamers on it. But more importantly, when you're playing an FPS game, having like full base, it makes the game more immersive but it actually sometimes like muddies some of the sounds that might be more important for tactics. Like the most important thing that you wanna hear is footsteps. How deep of an explosion it is, how much it like rattles is not like super relevant to you tactically. It's nice to know, yeah, but it's, it's more important to hear those subtle footsteps from far away. So having tinny headphones is kind of an advantage in shooting games, I guess. But that's what I really like about the V2 is you can EQ it if you're playing a shooting game like Warzone, but also if you want to be really immersed in a game like, like a racing game or Mass Effect or whatever, just a single player experience. You can turn up the bass or just, you know, decrease the treble a little bit. Just whatever you want to do just to make the game feel more immersive. But if you want that tactical edge, then you can tune it to that. You just have that flexibility with the V2s. So yeah, for headphone quality with the EQ, the V2s definitely beat out the V2X. But the funny part is the V2Xs actually sound just like the V2s if you use the V2s USB sound card. You get all the same benefits for tweaking the headphone audio quality and the mic. Unfortunately, Razer doesn't sell this sound card by itself. But basically my point is it's not that the drivers are any better in the V2s versus the V2Xs. It's really this sound card that allows it to be used in Synapse that makes the big difference. And since I'm sure someone in the comments is gonna bring up, oh, you can just download a third party equalizer and use that. I'm not gonna go down the third party equalizer rabbit hole in this video. Right now I'm just comparing how these two headsets work with the stuff that just comes in the box. But if you have done EQ with another program on these, then tell me how that went in the comments. So I should talk briefly about surround sound. Now I went into it with an open mind. The V2X comes with a code that lets you install some 7.1 surround sound thing and the V2 have THX surround sound optional and you'll be able to enable that in Razer Synapse. But yeah, everyone was right. Surround sound on headsets is still a gimmick for now. If you had a bunch of actual speakers all around you, then yeah, it would be sick. But enabling it on either of these headphones, it doesn't help you pinpoint enemies better. It just makes everything sound a little bit louder and a little bit closer, but it doesn't give you any tactical advantage. And it's not exactly even a fuller sound. It's just like louder and things are closer. Now for microphone audio quality. And this was quite a pain to test, by the way. I'll go over this in the convenience section, but getting the microphones on both of these headsets to work on a laptop or a phone where they only have one 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, well, I never got them to work. More on that later. Anyway, here is some sample audio from both microphones. This is test number three with the Razer Black Shark V2 and I don't have it plugged into the controller. I actually have it plugged in USB into the Razer USB sound card that they give you. This is the Razer Black Shark V2, and I decreased the volume a lot. It's like really low right now, just to make sure that there was no peaking. So this is the Razer Black Shark V2. All right, now this is the Razer Black Shark V2, and it is plugged into the PS4 controller, and I'm testing it with the adjust microphone level test. All right, this is test number three with the Razer Black Shark V2X and I have plugged this into the controller. This is the Black Shark V2X. This is what it sounds like. And yeah, this is in the adjust microphone level test, V2X. Microphone test speaking into the Razer Black Shark V2. This is what the device sounds like. There's not too much sound in here, but I do have my window open. Now here's me speaking into the Razer Black Shark V2 keyboard typing test. And right now I don't have any filters on or anything like that, just me typing. And now this is the V2 and I put the noise reduction uh, setting on in Razer Synapse and I also put the voice gate on. So this is me typing on a keyboard. This is the Razer Black Shark V2. Now I'm speaking into the Razer Black Shark V2X plugged into the PC. I put it in the splitter so that I can put the microphone in and then the line out as well. And I have the window open, not too much noise in here. Keyboard typing test now with the Razer Black Shark V2X. This is what this device sounds like, Razer Black Shark V2X. So on the V2X, you can't actually change the volume on here. I still have a lot of background noise going, but the volume of the mic is kind of locked, so it's never getting past negative 20 decibels. So if that's a problem, just something to keep in mind. So yeah. When using the 3.5 millimeter cable plugged right into a PS4 controller, 
Both mics sounded similar. They're tinny and they distort really easily from plosives, even just your breath sounds. Part of the low quality, especially in terms of the V2X, might be a PS4 thing though, because when plugged into a PC, there was a much more noticeable difference. I plugged the V2 into the USB sound card and the V2X into the splitter and the mic input of my computer. When doing this, the V2X's mic sounded way better and it was actually pretty passable for a headset. Overall quality wasn't great, but the bass was decent. But the V2 mic sounded really compressed Pressed and just low quality overall. And that kind of sucks because in Razer Synapse, not only do you get all these additional options for changing the sound of the audio coming out of the headphones themselves, but you get a lot of options to change the microphone. You can EQ and stuff like that. You get to add noise reduction, a voice gate, like I said, the equalizer, but honestly, and even though those work pretty well, the equalizer doesn't really do anything. The overall audio just is not good. So if you want a better mic for PC, then the V2X are the way to go. Noise cancellation is pretty good on both of these though. They cut out a lot of background noise, especially like keyboard typing. And I had the AC fan on really loud for some of these tests and it was able to get rid of that pretty well. Next is comfort and build quality. The overall design of both headsets is the same. There's a wire frame to adjust them. It looks flimsy, but it's not bad. The V2s have this cloth like material on the headband and ear cups. I'm not actually sure what it is, it's not that soft and the V2X have faux leather. It's a bit harder than the V2s, but not by a lot. The overall fit is decent, but it's not that comfortable or that snug either. They just don't quite like stick to my head like they really should, I feel like, but you know, everybody's head is a different size. It's not bad, but after like an hour, it's like, okay, that's enough of that. As you can see back there, I've been testing the HyperX Cloud 2 and Cloud Alphas and I found those to be a lot more comfortable than these over longer periods of time because I was testing gameplay for like hours and hours. After an hour, I had to like take off the razors, but the HyperX I can keep on for a lot longer. Both the V2 and the V2X leak sound like crazy out the ear cups themselves and they don't block out very much sound coming from like ambient noise. So if you wanted some noise cancellation in that regard, they don't really do that. Now the wire on the V2s is a little bit better. It's braided and it just like holds its shape just a little bit better. And this one on the V2X is a little bit, it feels kind of flimsy. So like if you ever like kind of like got this like kinked up, uh, that wouldn't be good. So overall, I give the advantage of the build quality to the V2s over the V2Xs, but it's not by a lot. They're very, very similar. All right, the last section is convenience, and I wish I didn't even have to make this section. Maybe I'm just really stupid, but I couldn't get the microphone of these headsets to work in my phone, it's an Android, or my laptop, which they both only have one 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The actual headphone part worked, but the mic just wouldn't detect, wouldn't work. Now I read a bunch of different like solutions on Reddit. You need like a jack adapter or a USB adapter, or like there's different like standards for the 3.5 jacks. All I know is it didn't work for me getting the mic to work. So just know if you're buying these for like a laptop, then that might be an issue. I don't have a solution for you. Maybe somebody else does. But again, I was able to use them on a PS4 controller, no problem. I just plugged both of these into the PS4 controller and without the splitter or without the USB adapter, just the 3.5 jack right in the controller, then the actual headsets, like the headphone itself worked and the mic worked. It was detected instantly on the PS4. And now for my verdict, if you're deciding between these two headphones for a console, then I would highly suggest getting the Razer Blackshark V2X. The headphones are going to sound the same as the V2 because you can't use the Razer Synapse equalizer or the audio effects. And as I demonstrated, the mic sounds pretty much the same when you use it in a PS4 controller. I didn't test a bunch of other consoles, but that's what it sounded like on PS4 from my tests. For PC, I highly recommend the Razer Blackshark V2 because of the USB sound card and the ability to alter and improve the audio in Razer Synapse. Links to both of these headsets are in the description.